Hello everyone, uh, today we are not allowed to sing, but there are different ways to belong, so I'm going to invite you to cl clap with me this rhythm. Good morning, what an exciting time. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Urbana-Champaign. We are a church of many different theologies and identities, united by our shared commitment to building community, seeking inspiration, promoting justice, and finding peace. We're still asking that everyone remains masked when we gather on Sunday mornings because we want to be able to welcome even the most vulnerable into our worship space. Please look around at the color-coded lanyards of your neighbors and be aware and respectful of others' needs and boundaries while we're together. If you're nervous about being here in the sanctuary, we have spillover room just across the entryway in Fellowship Hall, where the service should be live streamed on our projector. That space is also great if you need to cool off in the air conditioning or stretch your legs and enjoy a little wiggle room. We're a congregation of all ages, which means we embrace all the noises and little disruptions that kids can bring into a Sunday morning. In fact, you may have noticed that this Sunday is especially loosey-goosey. I don't usually wear my slippers and my bathrobe in the pulpit. <laughs> because it's the first Sunday of the month, it means that the Sunday morning worship service is multi-generational, aimed at genuinely welcoming and engaging you use of all ages and stages and making space for more play, more storytelling, and more cross-generation relationship. During the rest of the month, starting next week, kids and youth will start in here, then have the chance to go downstairs and enjoy religious exploration classrooms with uh, playing and learning among their age mates. On the first Sunday, we get to be all together. And in fact, since today is Pajama Sunday, we even have a cozy zone here on the floor in the front of the sanctuary where any kids, parents, or the young at heart who want to hang out on a big pile of blankets and pillows instead of in a pew for today's service, you are welcome to come up right now and get all settled in and stay as long as you like up here. <laughs> the only rules for the cozy zone are one, the cozy zone belongs to everyone, so you have to share the blankets and pillows and be kind. <laughs> And two, you have to try to be so, so quiet so that everyone else can still hear what's going on in the service. So if you feel like you're having a hard time remembering to share or trying to be so, so quiet, you can always go back to where your grown-ups are sitting, or you can hang out and watch the big screen in the fellowship hall. The cozy zone is good for coloring, looking at books, resting your body, or listening to the service from somewhere more comfy than a wooden pew. Today's message is about belonging 
about how good it feels to truly belong somewhere and why it can be so hard for us to find that sense of genuine belonging and hold on to it. So what better time to have a pajama day, an all-ages Sunday all about comfort and coziness and true belonging. Here at UUCUC, you should know that your comfy, cozy home self doesn't have to stay confined to your house. Every version of you is fully welcome at church. So whether this is your first Sunday with us, in which case, sorry everyone's wearing pajamas, <laughs> or your thousandth Sunday, whether you're here in the warm sanctuary or in our air-conditioned fellowship hall or watching from afar at home, know that this service is here for you and you are welcome. May you find in it something that you need, and may you find perhaps a path toward your own sense of belonging. With that, I will light our flaming chalice, symbol of our Unitarian Universalist tradition. If you have a chalice to light at home, please do so with me. And all are invited to say these words from poet Shel Silverstein. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer, if you're a pretender, come sit by my fire, for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. In the spirit of belonging, our opening hymn today is Come, Come, Whoever You Are, with words inspired by the Sufi Muslim poet Rumi. And as Juan mentioned earlier, given the very high COVID transmission rates in our community right now with the return of the student population, we're refraining from congregational singing for the time being. Music is still a fundamental part of our worship experience together, so please enjoy this hymn by simply listening or by humming along behind your mask and meditate on its message. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of living, ours is no caravan of despair. Come yet again, come, come. the time in our service when we tell a story or do an activity that's meant to be engaging to all different kinds of learning styles. And today's story comes to us from Bernard Weber. It's called Ira Sleeps Over. And instead of reading the book, I'm going to tell you the story as I remember it. So this is a story about a kid named Ira. And Ira's best friend, Max, lives in the house right next door, which is the greatest, because Max has invited Ira over for a sleepover. It's his first ever time sleeping at someone else's house. There are some kids who might relate to that, especially after a few years of COVID. So Max and Ira talk all day at school about all the fun things they're going to do together. They're going to build a blanket for it, they're going to look at Max's rock collection, and then they're going to tell scary stories and stay up late. At home, at dinner time that night, Ira talks to his family about all the things that he's going to bring. He needs to remember to pack his toothbrush, his pajamas, uh, and I think he's going to pack a rock that he can add to Max's rock collection. That's a nice thing to do for a friend. Ira's sister, Karina, asks if he will bring his teddy bear. Karina says that Max will probably laugh 
because teddy bears are for babies. Max is very cool and brave and grown up, and she will think that having a baby thing is just silly. Mom and dad say, no, Max will not laugh. Mom and dad say that there is nothing wrong with having a teddy bear, even when you're a big kid. But Sister Karina says, if Max finds out your teddy bear's name, she will laugh even more because it's a baby name. What do you think the teddy bear's name is? <laughs> so when Ira was a baby, he couldn't pronounce Teddy, Teddy. So instead he just said, D, D. So his bear's name is D, D. And Ira thinks, uh-oh, that is a baby name. So Ira decides he's going to leave Dee Dee at home. <laughs> no! <laughs> so Ira goes over to Max's house, and they have so much fun. They build a blanket fort together. They look at every single one of the rocks in Max's rock collections. And when Max's dads tell her that it's time for bed, Max and Ira snuggle down in all the pillows and blankets. They turn out the lights, and Max begins to tell a scary story. It's a story about a haunted house full of ghosts who creep around in the dark and jump out at people when they least expect it. Ira was getting a little bit scared, and he was wishing that he had brought Dee Dee with him. Then suddenly Max stopped the story and said, hang on, I need to go get something. What, said Ira. Oh, just something, said Max. And she goes to the shelf and pulls something down, brings it back to the blanket fort. <laughs> Ira isn't sure because it's still awfully dark in the room, but it looks a little bit like a teddy bear. You sleep with a teddy bear? Yes, said Max. Are you going to laugh at me? I thought I could sleep without Ted Ted tonight but now my scary story is too scary. You probably think I'm a big baby. And I know Ted Ted is a baby name, but it's because I didn't used to be able to say Teddy, Teddy, when I was a baby, so I shortened it. Ira said, <laughs> Ira said, no, I will not laugh at you. In fact, I have to go get something. What, said Max. Oh, just something, said Ira. So Ira walks outside and across the yard to his own front door. And his parents open it and ask him, oh, what happened, Ira, what's wrong? And he said, nothing's wrong, I'm here to get Dee Dee. <laughs> Ira carries Dee Dee back to Max's house and into the blanket fort, and the four of them, Max and Ira and Ted Ted and Dee Dee, all snuggle in for scary stories long, long into the night. And just before falling asleep, Ira says, Max, I think we will have lots and lots of sleepovers, and I think we might be best friends forever. And they did, and they were. The end. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for my good helper in the, the cozy zone. Every Sunday here at UUCUC, we make space together to share the joys and sorrows that are closest to our hearts. We usually take a long pause with music to give folks time to write down personal joys and sorrows that they're carrying and wish to share, either writing on a card or in an email sent to joysandsorrows at uucuc.org. Then the worship leader reads out those shared messages so we can celebrate each other's joyful news and support each other's griefs. Before COVID, there was one other element to this. During the pause while folks were writing and music was playing, those who wished to could also come forward and silently light a candle here on our altar table. When we went virtual back in March 2020, we lost that part of joys and sorrows, and today we're going to try offering it again. Juan is going to play a piano version of our blessing song, Long Time Sun, no singing, remember? And while he plays, you're invited to write the joys and sorrows you would like to share, either on a card, which you should be able to find in the back of your pew or at the central back table, or in an email sent to joysandsorrows at uucuc.org. And if you wish to, you can come forward during the music to light a candle from our chalice flame for your joy or for your sorrow and leave your card in the basket. 
kids in the cozy zone, you are also allowed to come forward and light a candle if you have something going on in your life that makes you feel so happy and joyful, or if you have something going on that's making you feel sad and worried. We want to know about it, and I will be up here to help out if anyone has trouble getting their candle lit safely. With that, we will hear Long Time Sun and share our joys and sorrows and light our candles. Thank you all, and thank you too for the, the really beautiful sharing behavior of passing the candles back to the person who's waiting behind you. That was really sweet. Hmm. A sorrow from Pat McClard. Sorrow from my trans son who endured bullying in the first week of school. A sorrow from Brienne Hayes. I lost my job this week. A joy. I did not like my job. <laughs> A joy from Natalie Danner. To begin REE, that's Religious Exploration and Engagement, with children, youth, and our REE volunteers next Sunday. Very exciting. A joy from David Gross. 57 years ago, Claudia and I arrived in Champaign-Urbana not yet knowing that we would together find here four graduate degrees, a church, careers, raise two sons, and retire here. This church has been the cornerstone of it all. A joy from Catherine Ritchie. 
In the middle of last Sunday's online service, I learned that results from a heart test I took a few days before were in, and on a weekend, no less. My doctor had heard something possibly awry in my heartbeat the week before and wanted me checked. Fortunately, my condition is totally benign and needs no treatment. And thanks to YouTube, I watched the interrupted service an hour later. Unitarian spirits were literally in the room with me that morning. From Genesis Sinek. Lately, I've been feeling like everyone around me is just straight up annoyed with me. That is hard. A joy from Pat Feely. Wendy Graves is a church member with an amazing, generous spirit. I could cry with her and laugh with her. I'm grateful and blessed to call her a friend. Amen. And please know that if your joy or sorrow is too tender to be shared, or if it is lost somewhere in an email inbox still waiting to be read, it is felt deeply in this space, spoken or unspoken. And I pray that you feel the love of this community reaching all around, filling every void. I hope that you find in it whatever it is that you need most today. And with that, I invite you to take a moment for silent prayer or meditation as we hear some meditative music. And now I'll invite uh, beloved church member Priscilla Crone to come forward and offer a reading. These words come to us from author Brene Brown. Fitting in is about assessing a situation and becoming who you need to be to be accepted. Belonging, on the other hand, doesn't require us to change who we are. It requires us to be who we are. True belonging only happens when we present our authentic, imperfect selves to the world, which means our sense of belonging can never be greater than our level of self-acceptance. Embracing our vulnerabilities is dangerous, but not nearly as dangerous as giving up on love and belonging and joy, the experiences that make us the most vulnerable. Many thanks, beautifully read. Now we as Unitarian Universalists know that our circle of care doesn't stop at our church doors or our virtual doors, as it were. We are deeply connected to the community we find ourselves in and to the wider world. Let me remind you, as Natalie Danner's joy did, that next Sunday will be our kickoff Sunday for children's religious exploration, a vital part 
of the service that we as a community provide to our young people. Also next, will be, next week will be the first of a two-part pathway to membership class. If you're new to UUCUC and want to learn more about getting connected and what we're all about, whether or not you consider becoming an official voting member, you are warmly invited to take part in this class, which will be here at church, 1 to 3 p.m., for the next two consecutive Sunday afternoons. We also have a short message today from Sandy Hannum, who pre-recorded it, to tell us all about Crop Walk, which is an effort to combat food insecurity in our community. And I think the video came through quiet, so we're hushing the fans and we're being our quietest selves so that we can hear what Sandy's telling us. I'm Sandy Hannum, and I want to tell you about Crop Walk, a community-wide interfaith effort to fight hunger and poverty and relieve suffering from disasters. Right now, the effects of COVID, climate change, and war have increased hunger and poverty dramatically. And horrendous natural disasters are occurring much more frequently all over the world. It's easy to feel overwhelmed and exhausted by all this suffering. But we are the fortunate ones because we are in a position to help. We can't fix everything, but we can take small steps in the right direction and provide some relief to some people. This is what Crop Walk is all about. 25% of the funds raised will go to local groups, the Daily Bread Soup Kitchen, the Eastern Illinois Food Bank, the Sola Grazia Farm, and the Wesley Food Pantry. The other 75% will go wherever it is needed most, including relief efforts for refugees and those suffering from natural disasters. A CU Crop Walk 2022 will be held on Sunday, October 2nd, but fundraising will continue through October. You can help in this effort by going to the website you see on your screen, donate on behalf of the UU Walkers team or a particular walker, or join the team. We need you. Thank you for your generosity and compassion supporting this worthy cause. Thank you, Sandy, for rallying to the cause for us. Each Sunday, we pass the plate and take up a collection which we then share with an organization doing the work of justice in the world. For the month of September, we'll be sharing our plate with Uniting Pride of Champaign-Urbana, a local nonprofit that provides support and advocacy for LGBTQ causes. We have a short video from them to introduce their mission and thank UUCUC for our support. And their message will segue directly into our offertory music, complete with a local Pride Fest slideshow featuring some familiar faces. So ushers, once the slideshow portion of the video starts, you'll know it's time to pass the plate. You can give by text or through the online portal on our website, or if you're here in the sanctuary, the basket will be passed and checks can be made out to Unitarian Universalist Church of Urbana-Champaign. We invite you to give whatever is generous for you, whatever that looks like, and anything you contribute will be gratefully received and put to use, making a real impact for people who need it. Uniting Pride was founded in 2009 as a 501c3 nonprofit organization to advocate for the equality, wellness, and visibility of the LGBTQ community in Champaign County. UP exists to create a community where all who identify as sexual or gender minorities can live full, healthy, and vibrant lives. We have a few main areas of work. Support and social groups, serving everyone from our littlest littles up through our elders. We offer free LGBTQ plus cultural competency training for anyone willing to have us, from schools to healthcare to private businesses to faith groups to community groups and more. An area of growth for us is around advocacy, any organization like ours always works to put ourselves out of business. Our goal is that someday there's no more need because the world is affirming and safe for everyone. Sadly, things are going the opposite direction. 2021 was the worst year in U.S. history for the most anti-LGBTQ plus legislation ever passed. And 2022 is on track to shatter that record. So we formed an advocacy committee to address this growing need. And lastly, our events and programs. 
We produced the annual Pride Fest in the fall with our signature parade and fair, but we've also added a lot more this past year, from social to educational, to adult to youth and family. We are striving to create more safe and affirming socialization and community. Of course, all this takes resources to do. Uniting Pride is on an aggressive growth plan. Again, sadly, due to increased need. We've reached our max capacity based on the staff, funding, and resources we currently have. And yet there is so much more we could do if we had what we needed to do it. So if you're lucky enough to be in a position to give, we thank you for helping us. And we hope to see you at this year's Pride Fest, September 24th to October 2nd. Check our website for more information on the incredible week of programming we're offering this year. And now I leave you with a look back on last year's Pride Fest to remind us what this work is really about. I'm not one for exaggeration. I'll say it a million times. We could see a whole lot better if we opened up our eyes. A world so big could be much bigger if we did I didn't uh, pay Julie to slip that picture of me in there. <laughs> uh, have you thought before, before today, before we heard our reading, have you thought before about the difference between fitting in and belonging? They're practically synonyms, but as the reading from Brene Brown says, you can take care and pull apart their definitions and show the difference if you want to. She says that fitting in can require changing yourself, but belonging only requires being yourself. It feels good to fit in. It feels good to feel like you're similar to the people around you and like you're included in something. But it's possible to fit in and still be lonely. It's possible to fit in even to be really good at fitting in, be popular, and still feel like no one knows the real you. It probably isn't hard to think of a time that you felt that way in your life, at work, at school, with a certain group of friends, or even within our own families. Fitting in means becoming a version of ourself that's enough like everyone else that will be accepted and easily understood. Fitting in means leaving our teddy bear at home so that we can be sure no one will laugh at us. Belonging is the word we have for what we actually need, what we crave even more than fitting in. Belonging is the true opposite of loneliness, the feeling that every part of you is welcome, even if it's not fully understood or familiar to everyone else. Belonging means finding a space where you can bring your teddy bear and know that no one will laugh, and that, in fact, you might find that you're not the only one who needs a teddy bear. Maybe other people were afraid to admit that they have parts of themselves that they're sometimes too scared to show. 
faith communities, churches, temples, sanghas, when we are at our best, can be places of belonging. Lots of people who really click with a spiritual community will describe an experience they have early on of arriving in a place, joining a gathering, or these days watching a service online, and feeling an overwhelming sense of rightness, of at-homeness, and that's belonging. Not necessarily because they agree with everything that's being said, almost certainly not that in UU spaces, but because there's a deeper feeling of invitation, of being asked to bring your true self, even the parts of you that you would normally leave at home or hide away. All of us have parts of who we are that we learn to hide in one way or another. And depending on what our growing up experience was like, some of us learned to hide those parts, especially at church. Maybe we got dressed up in our fanciest clothes and put on our best behavior, leaving our comfy pajamas and our wiggly, giggly selves back at home. For some of us, we might have learned to hide our identities, our queerness, our gender nonconformity, our neurodivergence, or we learned simply to hide the fact that we don't believe as we were supposed to, hide the fact that we question anything at all. And that's why finding Unitarian Universalism can be so world-changing for some of us. When you've been hiding parts of yourself for so long, thinking it was what you had to do in order to fit in, in order to belong anywhere. And then you arrive in a space where suddenly you're surrounded by people who have those same hidden traits just out in the open for everyone to see. Coming to church and seeing happy gay couples holding hands or they them pronoun stickers on people's name tags. Seeing agnostic and atheist faith leaders in the pulpit knowing that those things can be accepted, and more than accepted, can be embraced, interwoven, can fully belong. It's powerful, it's healing, and it is sorely needed in a lot of lives. Notice I said when we are at our best. When we are at our best, we are places of belonging, because of course, like any group of humans, churches, even UU churches, still lose track of the difference between belonging and fitting in. Speaking only for myself, growing up as a UU, nothing makes me feel more unseen than when someone stands at the front of a UU church saying how we accept everyone and would never judge anyone, when I know for a fact that my mom's church friend was judging me <laughs> for wearing my depression sweatpants or day three unwashed hair the previous Sunday. So it's pretty likely that on a normal Sunday, there's still some difference between your church self and your real, true you self. And maybe that's because you're trying to be extra kind and thoughtful and principled here with your church community, in which case, thank you, amazing. But it's likely that there are some things, clothing, behavior, beliefs, some parts of yourself that you fear would get a bad reaction here. So you just quietly tuck them away. And I get that on some level. It takes so little to stomp on those tender and vulnerable feelings of being your true self out there in front of others. Something as small as a sidelong glance, or a whisper that we can't quite catch, or a pause that's slightly too long before getting a compliment, getting shushed by a grown-up Shush, 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 just when you were starting to feel finally comfortable in an unfamiliar space. It takes so little to make us hide ourselves away again for fear that we were never truly welcome and it isn't safe to put ourselves out there. I mentioned before the way that UU spaces are often a revelation to LGBTQ folks who have been rejected and stifled in other faith communities, but that didn't just happen here. There was a decades-long organized effort by gay, lesbian, and trans UUs to educate and transform our majority straight and cisgender congregations into truly welcoming spaces for the queer community. And that effort is ongoing. For a long time, too, and especially in the past five years, UU communities everywhere have been reckoning with the fact that when it comes to race and class, church might be the most homogenous space that you're in all week. 
So don't get me wrong, we are far from a utopia of belonging. There is a lot of unspoken fitting in that comes along as baggage with a historically white Anglo-Saxon Protestant institution. And yet we do catch glimpses of it, of true belonging, of acceptance, community. We know we are capable of it, capable of that depth, that genuine welcome to every part of a person. We know it's possible, so we have to continue to strive for it. Because belonging, even though it's wonderful when we get to be the recipients of it and enjoy that feeling, it isn't just something we enjoy, it's something we create. We create it with our continued self-reflection and efforts to expand our community's circle of welcome. But more than that, we create it with our own vulnerability. Remember Max and Ira? from our story. Both of them were afraid of being laughed at for needing the comfort of a teddy bear. Both of them planned to leave their bears hidden away in order to fit in with what they thought the other expected. So imagine for a moment a version of the story where Max never went to the shelf to get the giant bear, Ted Ted. <laughs> imagine what the story would have looked like if Ira never went home to get Dee Dee. Both kids would have laid there in their dark blanket fort feeling scared of the ghost story, saying nothing, just trying to get through the night, being brave for the sake of not losing this wonderful friendship. And they would stay friends, though maybe not have quite so many sleepovers since it had turned out to be harder than they'd thought. It wouldn't be the end of the world. They would be fitting in with each other and with all the other kids who were too old for teddy bears. It wouldn't be a sad ending but they would never know what they had lost, the version of the story they were missing out on. Instead, thank goodness, in the real story, they were brave enough to show each other their true selves, their teddy bear having selves, and they got the chance to be accepted, and their friendship grew truer and deeper because of it. And that is something we all need. Even if we don't always have a sense of what's missing, of the story that we're not getting to live. We can get by on fitting in for a while. It's still nice, after all, to get along with people and have things that are similar and have a couple of different versions of ourselves for different situations. But we all, we human beings, are hungry for that deeper connection, for the comfort of having our whole self accepted and welcomed by other humans. We long for belonging. From our Brene Brown reading again, she writes, embracing our vulnerabilities is dangerous, but not nearly as dangerous as giving up on love and belonging and joy. So this is my prayer for all of us building community together here at UUCUC. First, that we celebrate the sense of true belonging when we feel it. It's no small thing and it's worth celebrating. Second, that we work to expand that sense to as many as we can. And finally, that we, all of us, risk bringing our whole self into this space. Whether it's your weird hobbies, your mental health struggles, your mysticism, your love of Jesus, your experience with homelessness, your stimming, your neo-pronouns, your comfy pants, your mistakes and questions and uncertainty we need it here. Whatever it is that you're worried won't fit in, that is what we need most. So may we all take the risk of sharing it with each other. I wish I could promise that you'll never face misunderstandings or rude behavior or thoughtlessness in response, but I can't. The risk is real. What I can promise is that there is someone else here longing to be reassured that they are not the only one. Someone else with a teddy bear left at home because they're afraid of being laughed at. There is someone here who needs to see your unique brand of belonging in order to know that they too are worthy and capable of being accepted and embraced for exactly the person they are. So with that, we're going to move smoothly into our hymn, 
because the hymn is a continuation of this message. We're going to listen to hymn 1053, How Could Anyone? And I want you to hear it as part of this message and hear it slightly differently each of the three times MR will sing it through. The first time, just listen to the words and the music, let it wash over you. The second time, look inward and hear the lyrics directed at your own self, your inner child, the parts of you that are still looking for that sense of belonging. And the third time, look across the pews at your neighbors, make eye contact if you're feeling brave, and send the lyrics of this hymn from your heart to theirs. And if you know this hymn, of course, feel free to hum along as loud as you want behind your masks. Say today it's a mercy that we're not singing because I cannot sing that hymn without crying. So I know that I've invited you to bring your vulnerable, hidden, complicated selves into this community, and I also know how hard it is to actually start doing that and how real the risk of judgment can feel. I am an introvert, so there's no way I would ever bring that kind of vulnerability into a space like coffee hour especially if I'm brand new to a community. So please know that I understand. I wanted to close our time together today with an invitation to consider what might be some more manageable, small-scale embraces of vulnerability. One, if you're watching online, you can follow the link on our website to go to an online fellowship hour after the service. It's a smaller group on Zoom and a less chaotic way to chat and meet people after church rather than navigating the snack table and face-to-face -face small talk here on the lawn. Two, if you're new to UUCUC and feeling at a loss about how to find your place here or even what all this is about, I invite you to please consider taking part in our Pathway to Membership class next Sunday afternoon. Despite its name, it doesn't have to end in official membership. We will never pressure you but it is a chance to get to know others who are similarly new here. People who can be real sources of friendship and support for you as you figure out your own sense of this place. And three, for newcomers and long timers and those in between, consider whether you might join a small Soul Matters group for the year, which still have a few open slots. 
These groups are designed to help small circles of people from a diversity of backgrounds and beliefs dig deep into questions that really matter. The content is simple enough for everyone to grasp and deep enough to spur serious reflection and group conversation. If you find it hard to open up and be vulnerable in big shared spaces, Soul Matters small groups might be perfect for you. This congregation is full of people who have formed deep, lifelong bonds through their experience with Soul Matters. If you are looking for someone to talk to about it, I can connect you with those who have been members in groups before. You can come up and talk to me after the service or email me if you're too introverted to talk. Now, just as we lit our chalice to begin our time together, we will extinguish it with these shared words from UU Minister, Reverend Elizabeth Selly Jones. She writes, we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. <laughs>